I have been launching high-altitude balloons for the last decade. Like this. It looks so simple, like a child's play. High-altitude balloons often associated with high school senior science projects. But I'm here to show you there's more in this technology than you would think. In my work, I was building a platform that could take experiments to the stratosphere for students, research groups, and even companies. Meanwhile, I had a thing for cameras. I always had a thing for cameras. And we combined these two passions a few years ago to research remote sensing from high altitude balloon platforms. Remote sensing is when we do not go on site and do the measurements directly, but do the measuring thing from far away, and we usually do it with cameras. Remote sensing also called Earth observation. And when I say Earth observation, most of the people think spy satellites. But there are more fields that can benefit from this. We can get weather data, vegetation spread and health, open water surfaces, monitoring floods and inland water, monitoring infrastructure, and wildfire detection. And it's also worth to mention that Munich has a vibrant remote sensing Earth observation community of university, startups, and even large companies. But how could a camera detect CO2 levels? How could a camera tell you that this is a forest and not a pavement painted green? Every material reflects different frequencies. This is how we see colors. But that's just a small portion of these electromagnetic frequencies. It's called the visible light. However, every chemical has its own spectral fingerprint, which really means a set of frequencies that the given material reflects. So, if you have a camera that could see beyond the visible light, you can detect different materials just by taking a picture of an area. For example, plants are green because they reflect most of the green frequencies, but also they reflect a lot of infrared light, but that we cannot see. So if you want to detect vegetation, you need a camera that has a sensor for visible light and has a sensor for infrared light. Now we have two pictures, one with regular colors and one with only infrared. A regular color picture built up from three colors, red, green, and blue. If we change one of the channels with the infrared picture, we've got a false color image where we can show you the vegetation very well. This is the simplest Im image processing we can do. And in this picture, you can see the red areas are plants and the very Dark spots are open water surfaces. Ah, a satellite image pops most of your minds. Yes, this kind of false coloring often associated with satellites. But I bet most of you have seen this picture. Last year, this image shook the internet. This is the so-called Chinese spy balloon. I am not here to decide if it was really a spy balloon or it was doing science work. I'm here to answer the question, why would a spacefaring nation use balloons to do surveillance instead of sending their satellites? High altitude balloons, often seen as toys, they have, people have preconceptions about them. They cannot lift heavy weight, they cannot stay afloat for a long time, and they cannot be controlled, they just fly with the winds. These are mostly true for the standard meteorological sounding balloons like this one. 
But the balloon was spotted over the US. It was more like this. And that thing could be the size of a football field. And it could lift even a ton of useful equipment. So was that Chinese balloon capable of Earth observation and surveillance? Yes, it was. There were a lot of data about the size of that balloon. There were pictures of the balloon itself and the platform it carried. So I made some calculations and I get that this balloon could lift hundreds of kilograms of useful payload, which means any of us could climb aboard and take a ride. A platform like this could produce more than enough power to operate a 100 kilogram camera, a positioning and guidance system, and satellite communications, all done with solar panels. The balloons, you know, the balloons most of you know are made of rubber, more specifically latex, but these balloons burst at a given altitude. Earth observation balloons usually made out of a special foil, which is non-elastic, so it can take the gas and stay afloat at a given altitude, even for a month. But if you are interested in Earth observation, you would like to observe a given area and not just random land beneath a balloon path. Can we send a balloon to a specific place? Of course, we can. Project Loon, formerly known as Google Loon, was dedicated to provide mobile network coverage over places where building radio towers was not possible. Oh yeah, they did it with balloons. Their balloons were able to stay afloat for almost 10 months and they were actively guided over the designated area. Their most successful mission was to provide emergency mob mobile network for Peru after the 2019 earthquake. They were not using blimps or zeppelins, so they were not having any active propulsion on board. They used a clever technique to guide the balloons with the winds of the upper atmosphere. While Loon was merely a proof of concept project, Nowadays, companies offer this kind of solution in their portfolio. So yes, balloon platforms are capable to do Earth observation, but still there's the question, if I have the possibility, if I have the resources to build and to launch a satellite, why would I do it with balloons? Sorry. It's cheap, it's quick, and it's easy. Using balloons is cheap since launching a satellite is still 300,000 euros to 10 million euros, while launching a balloon is 100 times less. And this is just the cost of the launch. Building the equipment comes above this. A satellite needs special components that withstand radiation, vibration, and extreme temperature differences. While if you want to build something for the stratosphere, you can use off-the-shelf components with automotive grading, and that will keep the launch cost low. Launching a balloon is quick. To build a satellite, even a small one is taking for at least two years. Larger ones can take for five to ten years. By the time the equipment on the satellite is commissioned, it's already outdated. While you can launch a balloon in six months, you can use the latest technology, and you can improve your equipment from launch to launch. Working with balloons is easy. To launch a satellite, you need a rocket, a launch pad, expensive infrastructure, specially trained teams, if you want to launch a high-altitude balloon, I can train your team in one week. And to launch it, you only need a football field. If you launch a larger balloon, it can be done from a small airfield 
so infrastructure also not a problem. And one more thing. Balloons can move slowly and hover over a given area, while satellites just whoosh over the land. If you want to make the satellite move slower, you have to make it farther from Earth. The farther the satellite, the lower the resolution of the image it can take. The same camera on a balloon can make a better picture than one on a satellite. Let me show you a comparison. This side of the image, which was taken of Budapest, is done by our, is done by our balloon, and we used this camera to take it. While the other one is taken by the Sentinel-2 satellite of the Copernicus mission of ESA. You can see the differences clearly. While our image is, has better resolution, the Sentinel picture has more full colors. You can also see that our picture is brighter in the middle. This is because we have very small lenses on the camera. While the lens on the Sentinel satellite is almost as big as our whole camera. Our device used the same frequencies that uh, the Sentinel-2 satellite, so we could make a false color image to present the vegetation. And in this picture you can see how our image shows the tree lines and the houses more sharper, but we have the advantage. That picture was taken from 20 kilometers of altitude, while the Sentinel satellite orbits Earth at around 800 kilometers. A balloon mission like ours can be done in three months and cost five to 10,000 euros, while the Sentinel satellite is a more than 15 million euro spacecraft that was take years to build and launch, but it's an ongoing mission and it's still up there. Now, you can see high altitude balloons are capable of Earth observation. They can be a complementary service or even a competition for satellites. This show how simple solutions can solve complex problems and progress can emerge from anywhere. But I know some of you still thinking, why would we spend time and money to send satellites and balloons to space when we could spend those resources to solve our problems here on Earth? It's true. You're right, there are problems. Pollution, climate change, natural disasters. But, we have to elevate our point of view to see these problems on the surface of Earth. By looking down from above, we can have a better overview on these issues, and Earth observation is the best tool for that. It's like how Albert Einstein said, you cannot solve a problem from the same level where it was created. Thank you.